And uh, you'll remember from previous video, we left uh, the equator in straight into a squall storm with the four other boats that we gathered at the equator with, uh, Stead, Raven and um, Sabre. And it certainly wasn't, that was the last of the flat water we were going to see for three weeks. Um, and we had 5,000 kilometers to go still. So this is what we had most of the time. fairly chill most of the time and there's a few pics of daily life over the three week passage. Day. Yeah, the scrubbers, the deck hands. That's a uh, dinner done in a very boisterous sea. Wind coming from the side, and we are rocking and rolling. Might look calm on camera but it's really boistering around. You can see Irish is <laughs> kind of keep still and eat. This became a part of my daily routine was chasing around to the front of the boat. The uh, boobies, the birds would land on the front and you'll see what they've done to my seat. So yeah, I had no time for them on the boat. Not easy to clean, so um, now I know where the expression uh, sticks like shit comes from. It's a roly sea out there, but we managed to do an alfresco breakfast bacon and eggs. So, here's a bit our first attempt at uh, raising the spinnaker. It took about an hour to get it up, and as we got it up, the wind died, we had to take it down. <laughs> it was uh, the spinnaker tested us, as you'll see later on in the, in the video. So, my other part of my daily routine is uh, squid patrol. They fly into the, onto the boat, uh, attracted by the navigation lights of the boat at night and also make a hell of a mess. So, yeah. It's washing day uh, in the middle of the Pacific. Use the uh, Sputnik manual washing machine and the uh, improvised clothesline. And here it is, my love-hate relationship with the Sputnik. Um, yeah, laundry day. Rock 
rock and roll day. Blowing about 18, 20 knots. And the sea is just a washing machine. We've just passed the halfway mark, um, that orange marker there, and we are under 2,000 nautical miles to go. <laughs> and it's going to take a long time, we're only doing five and a half knots, the wind has dropped a bit. Um, but yeah, here we here we come. I just flew into the cockpit and landed on my foot. The squirmy squid. Thank you, mate. Went round to the foredeck and more of his mates over there, so I sent them back home. Some signs of boredom setting in. <laughs> End of day 13 at sea. Um, under 2,000 nautical miles to go. And what a sunset we got, it's been a good day. Um, night watch, uh, day 14, 15, not too sure. Um, 16 actually, I think. And yeah, it's uh, three in the morning and not much happening. Watching another yacht, got the whole Pacific Ocean, and we've got another yacht two miles away from us. Uh, we're on a similar course, so we just gotta watch it we don't uh, bump into each other in the middle of thousands of square kilometers of nothingness. <laughs> That's the night watch story. So it's um, Saturday, 20th of May, I think day 17. Our general day on the boat. We're going along nicely, we're going downwind, um, so we've rigged up wing on wing, I'll show you, hold on. Um, let's have a look at the balance. So we're going and you can see wing on wing looks like... So that's wing on wing, one sail on one side, and the other sail on the other side, so it's almost like catching the air from the back, pushing us along quite nicely and we go dead downwind so the sea is nice and uh, we're running with the waves so it's not too bouncy um, very pleasant we're not going in quite the right direction but just for a little bit of a break we'll go in sort of the right direction it's a Cajun style tuna caught yesterday seared tuna and uh, Irish's um, vegetable pasta mix all the uh, en route. Now about the fifth cup of coffee tonight. On my second night watch, I'm gonna keep, uh, um, keep awake. Um, I'm gonna think the boat is rocking all over the place. And making coffee on a wobbly boat half asleep uh, is a challenge in itself. Uh, we're cruising along now on a boisterous sea. Um, it's about between six and eight knots. And one of the most important parts of running a boat is um, getting your reefing right. Reefing is adjusting the size of the sails. Um, you control the power of the boat and the speed of the boat and the force on the boat by adjusting the size of your sails, and we call that reefing. Sailing 101. Let me show you our sails are reefed at the moment so reef down to second reef otherwise we'd be in a oh well we'd be upside down but let me go show you okay so there we are that's the main sail and you can see it's not pulled up all the way to the top of the mast so it is reefed down to second reef in other words it's only about two-thirds of its normal size uh, the jib in front you can see at the bottom there it's also rolled up quite a bit so the jib is also only about two-thirds of its size 
So that's what we talk about when we talk about reefing. Sun sets on another day, um, 23rd of May, mid-Pacific. And there it goes. It was a good sailing day. We clocked up some good miles. And yeah, dinner is done. Dishes are done. End of day, time to take down the, uh, the big kite, the spinnaker. To my night watch. It's about uh, just after seven o'clock. Look at that sunset sky. Magnificent. Oops, that's my alarm. Got a wind shift. Just got to adjust the uh, course. So after that uh, SHRT show, um, I allowed myself the pleasure of showing off the spinnaker in full flight uh, in, the, in the right to video the kite. His Irish and I are very chuffed. More routine, end of every day, just go around the boat, check that everything is secure for the night. Um, things are lashed down, tied down, nothing's going to blow off. And uh, especially the foredeck, because we, we don't get to the foredeck at night, so it's a last chance to check it. Uh, the 
conditions right to launch the spinnaker, the kite. And wow, pulling us along like a sled. Uh, we're at 11, 10, 11 knots of wind and we're doing six, seven knots of speed. Happy of that. Um, and going downwind. Really comfortable. These boobies or gannets or whatever you want to call them amused us for quite a while. They would fly up to the boat looking for somewhere to land and at the last second they would duck away. Um, and as you'll see now, this, this poor guy, he's made his decision too late. Hey. <laughs> so we made uh, a load of this yesterday. So we've had it for last night's dinner, today's lunch, and it's going for tonight's dinner as well. So we'll be all pasta and sausage out and bully beef out after this. Uh, please note the orange juice. We've had our sundowner for the day. And, and uh, ketchup just to uh, spoil my cooking. <laughs> and the obligatory uh, sundowner drink on the dolphin seat. He has Irish um, trying to make his way to the dolphin seat. Uh, you'd think he'd had a few already, but uh, he got there and got the photo. Special time of the day, settling into night watch again, uh, and that's the sky. Magnificent. The surprise to me of the crossing was the amount of barnacles, gooseneck barnacles that grow on the boat and also the, the scum line, all that brown that develops. Uh, normally it gets cleared off with the uh, movement of the water. But these guys and the algae attach and grow as we went along. And by the end of the trip they were slowing us down by at least a knot or two so they uh, they a real uh, pest. And then even the, on the back deck the algae grows on the deck in salt water believe it or not. Uh, end of day dinner time and uh, this is what we got for tonight it's a proper concoction we're lazy Sunday nights leftover mince from yesterday some ravioli some corn into two minute noodles mix it all up done ha. dinner's done or almost done and uh, let's see if we can get the green flash we've got a nice clear horizon and uh, I'm going to use uh, the Canon camera, try and see if we can get the green flash. We'll see you after this. Uh, no, no green flash. Uh, there's too much cloud on the horizon, unfortunately. You can see the green flash in one of my previous videos uh, in Nasna. I've got a great video of a green flash on, on YouTube. Uh, sailing 101 again. So here's how the um, spinnaker works. That's the tack, that's where it's attached to the uh, middle of the boat. We can also attach it over there to the other hole to move it across. That becomes more of a proper spinnaker. Um, at the moment we're almost using it as a big jib. Big Genoa is what they call it. This is the clue, you can see it says very clearly there. Clue. And that goes, the sheet goes all the way back to the back of the boat where we control letting the sail in or out to control the amount of wind in it. And then the big trick with this particular spinnaker, right at the top there, you can see is the sock. And what happens when we want to drop it, we pull that sock down and it comes down and it just folds the whole sail up into that sock, like a giant condom. And uh, yeah, it's a, uh, sorry to be focused there, there we go. Um, and we're going to be doing that in a few minutes, just to the end of the day. We don't leave it up at night. Uh, if a big squall comes up or sudden wind comes up, this uh, beast is no fun to be trying to handle at night. Yeah, and that's the, uh, the spinnaker. At sunset. So we're not all sailors. Uh, here's some fishing uh, clips. Uh, we put that lure out. See how it's been chewed up <laughs> in the past. But uh, yeah, that's the beast that Irish caught, a big barracuda. Um, and we fed on that for days. Look at those teeth on it. Um, you were standing there with his foot and I said, Irish, you don't want to be that close. And what goes up must come down. There's a few uh, 
clips of taking the spinnaker down at the end of the day. We don't leave it up overnight, a um, bit too risky. Uh, it comes down in a sock, so we snuff it, snuffing the spinnaker, believe it or not. And uh, the big job actually is just to pack it away in the bag. Has made um, his speciality fish cakes. So that's barracuda and tuna mixed into fish cakes. Wow. Uh, with some some juice, not beer. And rice is on the go. Yeah. Cheers. So we're all settled uh, for the night. The sails have been changed from the spinnaker to the jib to a full mainsail. Sun is just gone, and this is our plan. Um, so here we are, and that's us over there. And we're going to get to Hiva Oa over there. So at the moment, you can see our course is taking us a little bit south of Hiva Oa, but that's because we can't sail dead downwind. Um, so we're going to uh, go down, and then we'll jab um, either later tonight or first thing in the morning, or just put the spinnaker up in the morning. We'll see how the wind is. So these are our, our strategies. But we get in there, we can now got uh, ourselves and Hiva over on the same screen. <laughs> and hooked into another big one. Um, this one was a bit big. It came loose uh, or snapped off just as we got it close to the boat. I was ready with a gaff. Um, Irish was giving the fish a work over. But yeah, we were three nil down at that stage. Morning from the uh, flight, deck. flight deck, Captain uh, Kirk. <laughs> and wow, look at that! Spectacular sunrise. Well, somewhere there, but it is there. Beam me up, Scotty. And sunrise day uh, 27, I think it is. Um, crossing the Pacific. It's my birthday, 31 May. And this is what I woke up to, or oh, what I've got on my night watch. I've been awake for a few hours. Um, pretty dark on that side. And beautiful sun coming up over there. Where's the best time of the day to me, uh, the sunrise? Especially when you're on night watch and you see that sun come up. So here is where we are, you can see that's us there. Uh, this is course, we're following a bit of a curved course as suggested by Predict Wind, the weather report. And there's Hiva Oa. 
Um, distance remaining is 203 nautical miles. And saying that should take us more or less another one day, 11 hours, two days. There is as the space speed changes. And that's our speed we're doing uh, four and a half knots under motor. Now the problem is normally we'd be going about six knots under motor, but we've got all those little gooseneck barnacles growing under the boat and that's slowing us right down. Um, buggers with an F. Yeah, get in there. Cheers. Cheers, the, cheers. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. To the big five five. Enjoy your birthday cake. And here's my birthday cake. Tuna and barracuda fish cakes. Better than any chocolate cake. Yeah, right. <laughs> and into the evening of uh, day 28. Um, yeah. Cracker sunset. Wow, look at that. Okay, night watch coming to an end. The last night watch of this passage. Uh, and there is our miles left. You can see. 83 out of 4,000 miles left. 83 to go to Eva Oa. Ah, the excitement is building. So, just a few night clips. Uh, the last two or three nights on our passage was full moon. Um, so, I used the GoPro on a very sh slow shutter speed. Um, to let in as much light as possible and got these great shots of uh, the moon, believe it or not. And the final sunrise of uh, the Pacific Crossing, day 30. And nice wind pushing us into Hiva Oa. This is uh, Viento del Mar, Viento del Mar. So dead ahead is uh, Ibaoa. You can sort of see it over there, uh, about 25 miles, nautical miles away. And yeah, land ho. And closer. Island's getting bigger on the map. And now finally. And there we can see the island itself. Uh, sort of. Just um sitting here on the foredeck, uh, taking in the land. Haven't seen land in uh, four weeks. So, sorry, three weeks. We did see the Galapagos briefly. So three weeks ago, saw land. And otherwise just been water. It's the Pacific Ocean or the majority of it crossed. Uh, almost 4,000 nautical miles. So yeah, I feel a fair sense of achievement. And a lump in the throat um, because it also marks nearly halfway around the world um, but yeah it's uh, quite a weird feeling um, and heads off to Viento del Mar the boat's been unbelievably good it's done it's just rambled on for four weeks hasn't complained constant motion um, and yeah, kept us safe, kept us moving. And just uh, heads off to to the, uh, the old girl. And there she is. Anyway, chat from land. Ultimate passage beer, Pacific Crossing. It's ten past twelve at night, but it can't break tradition. Cheers. Sure. Cheers. And 
day one here in uh, Etuona Bay on Hipaoa. We arrived five hours ago and we woke up to this. And this is uh, Etiwana Bay, Iwaoa, and that is 4th, 4th of June, we are going to check into French Polynesia. And that's it, now that you are experts in spinnaker handling or how not to handle spinnaker, um, that's it for this lot. Um, the next video will be the Marquesas, Hiva uh, Oa, Tuatu Island and Nuku Hiva. Um, really spectacular places.